Hi! Today we're going to talk about deep set eyes and everything that I know about them. <laughs> I'm going to show you an eye look, an everyday type of a look that you can wear and it will look flattering on your deep set eyes and uh, some other things. Basically a discussion around deep set eyes and the tutorial of course. So let's get into it. Okay, first things first, the most important thing. How can you tell if you have deep set eyes? Deep set eyes are basically eyes that are sunken in into the eye socket somehow, into the head. They are deep into the head, so uh, how can you tell if you have those? First things first, on your under eyes. I do have deep set eyes, so on your under eyes you're going to notice I do have concealer right now, so it's pretty hard to notice, but you have a, a hole here. Basically, you can tell where your eye socket starts. As you can see, I have a little bit of darkness here and, and it just goes around my eye. So you can tell that this area, this eye socket is pushed back into my head somehow. A second and most important thing, the crease. On deep set eyes, since the eye is pushed back into the head, this area above the crease is pushed forward somehow so the lid is pushed back and this area is pushed forward and you can see here that I have a very visible crease it's like I have a natural cut crease I think I'm going to search for celebrities with deep set eyes and I'm going to uh, insert pictures here so you can see various shapes of deep set eyes I have concealer on my lids so my lid looks a little bit brighter right now but yeah my uh, eyes are sunken into my head basically. <laughs> and we're going to talk looks that you can wear on deep set eyes. I'm going to start by saying that you can wear whatever you want in terms of eyeshadow, eyeliner, any shape, any color that you want. But we're going to talk about the things that I feel like are most flattering on deep set eyes. If you follow me, you know that I experiment with all sorts of crazy looks. So this is not a rule, but like maybe if you're not that kind of a person that really plays a lot with makeup and you want to a look that you know will be flattering on your eye shape, this video is for you. Let's get into it. <laughs> the thing that I noticed a lot when it comes to deep set eyes, people recommend doing cut creases and I'm like, just no. <laughs> like cut creases, I feel like it's the worst look that you can wear if you have deep set eyes because you already have kind of a natural cut crease going on so um, if you do a cut crease, you kind of emphasize the fact that your crease is very visible already. Plus, you cannot uh, fake your crease. So if you want to do a cut crease, you have to follow your natural crease. There's no going above the crease like you can do on a hooded eye. So if you do want to wear a cut crease, you have to cut your crease exactly where your natural crease is. If you go above it, you're still going to be able to see your natural crease. I'm going to insert some pictures with me wearing cut creases. So you can see, even though I try to go above it and stuff like that, to do very intense cut crease, all these crazy looks, you can still see my natural crease because you can't fool a deep set eyes crease. It's just there. <laughs> you can get rid of it. Basically what, I, what I'll be trying to do with my makeup today is not enhance the darkness that is going around my crease, and we'll be trying to bring the lid a little bit forward since the lid is sunken back into my head I'm going to apply a light color on my lid so it can be pushed forward visually a little bit and uh, also we're going to try to fix this uh, under eye that usually looks a little bit like you can tell that it's sunken back into my head let's get into it we're going to use browns because like I feel like most people use neutrals but you can use whatever color you like. So I'm going to use, this is the Sigma Warm Neutrals Volume 2 palette. I'm going to start with a transition shade. Basically, what you want to do is not apply a very dark shade in your crease. Again, do not enhance the fact that the crease is so... The, like, the crease is really defined already. You don't want a dark shade to define your crease. Like, usually, that's why people apply dark shadows here. They want to really shape up the eye and just make the crease a little bit more visible. I'll be saying crease a lot in today's video, so... Speaking of the crease, whatever you put really inside your crease, like right here, won't be visible. It will be, it will be swallowed by your crease. So if you're trying to do that kind of a graphic liner here, 
because I love that look. Uh, if you apply it right here, right in your crease, when you look ahead it will be sunken into your actual crease. So usually what I do if I want to do a graphic liner, I just go a little bit above it. Like when I look, I do work with this side of my eye a lot. So if I do a graphic liner, I will apply it right here, a little bit above my crease. This, basically this is the first area that shows up when I look ahead that's above my crease. But whatever, we're going to start with a transition shade. I'm going to take the shade Toasty here. Just a brown shade that's a little bit darker than your skin tone. You can use your bronzer, just make sure that it's not too dark. Again, we don't want to enhance the fact that the crease is very defined. So I'm just going to take Toasty here. We just want to add a little bit of color in the crease. And actually, the placement that I'm going to do is a little bit above the crease. So I, like I said, if you apply stuff right here, like right in your crease, you won't be able to see it because it will be swallowed when you open your eyes. So, like I said, I do work with this area a lot, the area above my crease, and that's where we're going to apply the transition shade. And again, I'm not sure if this is a deep set eye thing, but for my eye shape, uh, this area of my eye that's around my nose is very dark. This is like the most sunken back area, so I don't apply dark shadows in here. You have to think like this, wherever you apply dark shadows, you're pushing those areas backwards somehow. Like how we do with contour. If you're contouring under the cheekbones here, we basically want to push that backwards, you know, to create kind of a hollow in the cheek. It's the same with eyeshadow. Where we apply dark shadows, visually you're going to push those areas backwards. So uh, I'm going to focus the darker shadows in my outer corner. Here we want to keep it light. Whenever I do apply shadows in my crease, I start from my outer corner and a little bit above my crease, like right here. This is a Dress Play 006, by the way, it's a fluffy blending brush. And uh, I will bring the shadow inwards, but I want the most concentration to be on my outer corner here. And we're going to fade it inwards. So here, I'm, I'm just going to stop at about this level, I'm not going to bring anything in this area. I've seen Nikki Tutorials apply a lot of shadow here, but for my eye shape, like for deep set eyes, for my eye shape, because I'm not sure if this is a deep set eye thing, uh, that it's not very flattering. We're just going to apply the shadow here, and I usually like extending it, because I also have closed set eyes, so my eyes are pretty close to my nose, but that's, again, not, uh, not a deep set eye thing. So since any dark shadows that we apply is going to push back those areas where we apply it, where we apply it, since this area for deep set eyes is pushed forward and the lid is pushed back, we want to apply a slightly darker shade right here above the crease, how I did here. So you visually you kind of push it back a little bit. And uh, the trick is on the lid you want to apply something light. You can apply a matte, but a shimmer will really push the lid forward. It's kind of like, acts like a highlighter. Let me just switch to a smaller brush and I'm going to take the same shade. We're going to do the same thing on our lower lash line and while we're doing this, I, like I said, I do experiment a lot with makeup and I noticed that whenever I don't apply a shadow on my um, lower lash line, I didn't know what it was, but it kind of looked off somehow. I figured it out. <laughs> and uh, the reason is, if you apply, again, a shadow here, a darker shadow, on your lower lash line, you're going to make whatever is under that shadow, oh, you're going to push it forward visually. Because basically, this under eye, this lower lash line is going to look like it's pushed back, so that way, this side is going to look like it's pushed forward. So we're going to apply the shade all over the lower lash line, but again, I'm starting from my outer corner and bringing it inwards. So this is going to create the illusion that this side is not as pushed back as it is. And uh, what I like to do is connect it to the top part and just flick my brush upwards so it lifts my outer corner a little bit. And you can take your fluffier brush and just further blend it. Okay, next, like I said, on the lid we're going to apply a shimmer because that will really push the lid forward. I will just use a brush so you can see better what I'm doing. I'm going to pick the shade Beaming here. So it's kind of like a medium shimmer, kind of close to my skin tone, not in tone, but like in uh, 
intensity, let's say. So it's not darker than my skin tone, nor lighter. Even though my skin tone is not pink. You get the idea. I hope so. This is a Morphe brush, it's from their vegan brush set. It has no number, but you can use a flat brush or you can use your finger. If you use a fluffier brush, something like this, like a shading brush like that, uh, the shadow is not going to look as vibrant. So it depends on the look that you're going for. Okay, so this shade is going to go on my entire lid, starting from the inner part, because here is where I want the most intensity. Again, I do want this part to be really pushed forward because of my, uh, because of this hollow that I have here. I even apply it a little bit higher so I can bring this particular side of the eye forward. So I do go a little bit in my crease and then I just fade it towards the center of my eye. Again, you can use a matte. But I know there's a lot of people that just uh, think that shimmers are for nighttime. <laughs> I don't get it, but okay. So if you want a very soft daytime look, you can just go for mattes. I'll take my fluffy brush and just fade this a little bit. So everything is really well blended. I'll pick the shade Charmer here and just highlight my inner corner a little bit. Again, that's going to bring this particular point of my eye a little bit forward. You can even leave the look like this if you want, again, a soft daytime look. But I'm going to show you where I would apply the darker shadows if you're going for a more intense nighttime look. Let's use the shade Henna here, which is a slightly darker brown. I'm going to use again the Morphium 506 tap of the excess so it doesn't go on my face because I already did my face. I usually apply the darker shadows in my outer corner. This is kind of like a safe zone because it doesn't have anything to do with the crease. Or you can apply the darker shadows on your lash line. Like right here, you can uh, apply a pencil and smudge it out. I do have round eyes, so I kind of avoid doing that most of the time. Uh, if I do apply a pencil and I want to smudge it, I just apply it on the outer corner so I don't in emphasize the fact that I have round eyes. So I'm going to take this shade and apply it right here. I like doing my makeup with my eyes open so I can really see how the placement affects my eye shape. So something like that. And I'm also going to apply a little bit of that on the outer corner of my lower lash line. And again connect the bottom part with the top part. And then when there's basically no product left on my brush, I'm just going to fade it into the shimmer with little circular motions and you can take your fluffy brush and just blend this out but again as you can see I did not bring this dark shadow in my crease I just kept it on the other corner of my eye and here again I like extending it a little bit this is kind of like the more intense version you can take an even darker shadow now and just apply it more concentrated here in the other corner and add even more intensity to the look. But what I would do for deep set eyes is just, in general, I would avoid very dark shadows on exactly on the lid. If you want to do a smoky eye, I would just smoke out the outer corner and just extend the eye rather than applying the dark shadows directly on the lid because that's going to really push the lid backwards. But again, you can experiment with any looks that you want. A thing that will really intensify this look is applying a dark pencil on the waterline, smudge it out and smoke it out even more. But the, this is kind of like the main placement that I feel like is very flattering on deep set eyes. And by the way, another thing, if you look ahead, some people might think that you have a cut crease going on because basically it's naturally there. So with the shimmer on the lid and the transition on the crease, you're going to look like you have a cut crease going on. So why bother doing a cut crease? <laughs> so this is kind of a difference. I'm going to do my other eye as well. And uh, that's it. 